Hey girl, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jasmine. If you are new here, today we're talking all about my 50 pound weight loss journey. I have gotten a lot of questions and requests to do like a sit down video about this and I feel like it's only right to just put it all in this one video. Just sharing where I am right now, where I'm going and giving all the details that I can about the entire process. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I feel like I have to give a little bit of a backstory. I usually like hearing backstories whenever I watch these videos just to kind of see where the person started out from. So up until I was pregnant with my second child, I was pretty much in a normal weight range. I was never really skinny. I was kind of like in just the average weight. So I'm 5'3". I've been 5'3 since I was like, I don't know. I grew really quickly and I just kind of stayed that height since like sixth grade. And my weight kind of fluctuated from 125 to like 133, I would say all through middle high school and into college. So my sophomore year of college, I found out that I possibly had PCOS. I, having an irregular cycle was my main symptom of PCOS at the time. A doctor told me that the only concern with PCOS was not being able to get pregnant. You would need like medication and all this stuff to be able to get pregnant. Well, that was very much not true because only six months later, I found out I was pregnant with my son. This happened the summer of my sophomore year. That's when I found out. I didn't know for a while because I had a regular cycle, so it wasn't abnormal to miss a cycle. I did eventually find out when I had gone back to that same doctor to follow up on my PCOS labs and that sort of thing. So anyways, I was pregnant. I gained maybe like 60 pounds. I had my son. About nine months later, I was able to lose all the weight. I got back down to like 127. Back then, I did the whole 30. It was like a newer thing. Like this was back in 2011. So the whole 30 was like this newer popular um way of eating it's like a paleo diet basically i did it for about three months and i think i was around 155 at the time and i got down to like 127 that was the first time i ever did like a big weight transformation because i've never because i never had so much weight to lose so i did that and then a couple years later i got pregnant with my daughter when i got pregnant with my daughter things were a little different my life was very different i had just finished nursing school. I was about to start a job. I had a lot of stress about that. I had postpartum depression, which I didn't really know until years later, looking back on it, realizing like I was going through it silently, basically, because I didn't really know that I was. So um, that kind of put me in a really bad place. And that's kind of where everything started with my weight. So I was never able to fully lose the pregnancy weight from that pregnancy. I would lose 20 pounds, gain 20 pounds, lose 20 pounds, gain 20 pounds. And this happened over and over again for nine years, literally. Uh, there were times where I would maintain the weight loss, but I kept creeping higher and higher. So at first I would stay like in the 160s and I would get to the 170s and then the 180s. And next thing you know, I'm in the 200s. I feel like I was just stuck. You know, I would lose 20 to 30 pounds and then the next event would happen. It would be a birthday. It would be like a party for some reason, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever the case. I would have a slice of cake and everything would go down the drain. Like it was crazy, you guys. It was actually insane. I'll touch a little bit more about this later when I talk about Wigovi and semaglutide because that was always like my downfall. And it would happen every time, even though I knew that it was gonna happen. Like, it's like I couldn't control myself. I, I just, I couldn't control my thoughts. I had no self-control, no willpower. Any bit of just simple sugar would just do it for me every single time so that's kind of my backstory that's kind of where i started fast forward to 2019 i believe i got officially diagnosed with pcos i knew that i had it and it kind of explained a lot more for me it made everything make sense like as to why this was so difficult because with pcos you do deal with a lot of things that will make weight loss very difficult. It makes the whole thing 10 times harder dealing with insulin resistance which is what i think really made it almost impossible to not collapse. If you know, you know, like if you've dealt with that and you know, if you've dealt with that or you are dealing with it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like it's literally like you're addicted, like you cannot control yourself. I don't think somebody who's never been through it can understand because prior to me going through it, 
I could never understand. I wouldn't be able to understand. I, I really wouldn't. The more weight I gained, the worse my symptoms kind of became. That's something that I noticed personally and I'm pretty sure there is science behind that. So we're gonna fast forward again to 2023, which is this year. I was already dealing with my low self-confidence. I tried so hard to do the whole body positivity thing and I just felt like I was lying to myself, honestly. Like I, I could not take myself seriously. I felt like I just, I was... I was not happy with myself. I didn't feel good. I didn't like the way I looked. I just constantly was thinking about it. It was just one more thing in my mind, the back of my head at all times. Like I just could not, I couldn't, I couldn't fake the funk. Like I really just couldn't. And I felt like I just had to do something about it. I tried so many times over the years and I felt like I just had to do something this year. Like it was now or never. In the spring, a lot of talk was coming out about some glutide, Ozempic, Wegovy. Like there was a lot of talk about those medications. Let me tell y'all, I am the last person to take a medication. I'm that person that will go take a nap before I take an Advil. If my throat is bothering me, I'm gonna go gargle some salt. I'll take honey and lime for a cold. Like I'm that person. And like I really don't prefer to take medications so when I decide to take a medication I'm going through it okay like I'm really going through it and I did try metformin back in 2020 2019 actually when I first found out I had PCOS officially it was not for me I had the worst stomach issues I was always nauseous it did work in the sense that I was able to lose weight and it did help control my cravings a bit but I had the worst GI symptoms from it and I just couldn't do it I was working full-time as a nurse at the time I, I never knew when I would need to run to the bathroom you know and it was just not the ideal situation I don't like using the, the bathroom in public and it was not just a regular use the bathroom situation it was like use the bathroom okay like it's coming, it's coming now, like run. And make sure you have your poopoo with you, that type of use the bathroom, okay? So eventually I just, I did it for two months, I wanna say, and I stopped, I never refilled. I just, just stopped it because it was not working. So in May of this year, when I was going to my primary care doctor, I really was gonna bring it up again. This year in May, I felt like this is it, I have to do something. So I actually thought about starting metformin. I said, maybe because I'm working from home now, I figure maybe it wouldn't be as bad. I can deal with it better, I can control the situation, and maybe I can navigate metformin a little better. I also had been hearing a lot about Ozempic and Wegovy and all those medications like I mentioned. So I was kind of thinking about those things and I thought I would bring it up to my primary care doctor when I saw her. So I had my appointment in May, I saw my doctor. Um, she did address my weight when she first saw me because obviously like she weighed me. I was 209 pounds at the time. She was definitely concerned with my weight but in a very genuine way. You know some doctors, they could be kind of mean. This lady was such an angel. She was so nice about it, but she definitely, you know, brought it up as a concern. And obviously I was very concerned as well. So um, we talked about that a little bit. She took my blood pressure. Well, she retook my blood pressure because it was high. That was the first time I ever had a high blood pressure reading in my entire life. Seeing my blood pressure on the screen really did it for me. I was like, I went from concerned citizen to ma'am, we gotta do something right now. Like we gotta fix this. So my doctor was also kind of like, oh, we gotta, something's going on here. She wanted me to come back in two weeks to recheck it. Cause she said it's high, I have to come back in two weeks to recheck it. At the time I was drinking a lot of caffeine as well. So I decided to cut out caffeine. I said, maybe that's the culprit. So I'm gonna cut out any caffeine that I was consuming. So I cut out coffee, y'all. Y'all, I love coffee, but I cut coffee out. I cut out matcha, I cut out, I cut out all caffeine because I thought, you know, maybe that's what it is. Because like I said, I had been overweight for a while, but my blood pressure had never been affected. Like nothing had ever been affected by my weight at that uh, up until that point. So my blood pressure was the first thing that was like, ooh, hmm. I'm a little concerned, but I blamed it on the coffee. I said, you know what, maybe it's the coffee. My doctor was more so leaning towards the weight. Anyways, I go back to see her a couple weeks later, rechecks it, and at that time, my labs had also come back in because I did labs the first time I saw her. So she rechecks the blood pressure, it was still high, and now she's going over my labs. She was very concerned, and based on what she had seen, she was kind of like, you know, what you have going on is kind of looks like something that could be metabolic syndrome where everything kind of is being affected and it could lead to like serious stuff. So when I heard that, I I was like, no. Nah. Like one thing about me, like I don't play about that stuff. Like I do not play about that stuff with my background in healthcare. Like I'm, I don't play about that. So it affected me like physically. My confidence was one thing, but once I started seeing the internal effects, 
it, it started it started to feel a little different. So the first thing was my A1C. My A1C, I had known it to be a little bit high. It was in the pre-diabetic range, so that was number one and obviously a huge concern. Now, with PCOS, you do find that a lot because that's one of the things that tends to be associated with PCOS. So I had that going on based on my blood work. The next thing was obviously my blood pressure, which I mentioned. I also had high cholesterol. And the funny thing about high cholesterol with me was I didn't have a high cholesterol diet, but I was overweight, holding on to excess fat. So that was contributing to me having high cholesterol. So, so my cholesterol's high, my B12 levels were low, my vitamin D was low, um, my liver function tests were off. I'm gonna check my phone real quick because I feel like I'm forgetting something. So I said my cholesterol, my A1C, my BP, my liver enzymes, B12, that's everything. Okay, so B12 was something that I didn't realize. Apparently, it can be linked to obesity. Basically, what she told me was everything that I was experiencing in my labs and my blood pressure and everything like that was tied to my weight. That was her hypothesis, her opinion, and she felt like once I lost weight, everything would go back to normal. So when I heard that, I mean, it was like, say no more, sis, like, what do I do? <laughs> So she gave me a referral to an endocrine doctor. She said that he was really good. He will definitely help me get to where I need to be. The earliest availability to see the doctor was in August. Now we're in May, y'all. August was the earliest availability. And here I am freaking out about everything. Cause I'm like, this is, I need to do something yesterday. Like I can't wait till August. Like this is crazy. So I did mention to her that that was the quickest appointment I was able to get. Cause I was like, maybe she could do something like, you know, work a little something behind the scenes to get me a quicker appointment, but she couldn't. And she basically was like, it's fine. It's not an emergency. We just need to have you see him in August. So here I am with my August appointment. And one thing about me is y'all know this cause I've said it so many times is that I'm very impatient. Okay. If I could figure out a way to speed things up, <laughs> best believe I'm gonna do it okay around that same time I remember seeing that Shanika who was the owner of Touch Medical Spa had some glutide available and she was advertising it and I said you know what this may be maybe I maybe I could start here maybe I could start with her and do this till August and figure out where we go from there I didn't know what he was going to prescribe me or anything like that. I know semaglutide was something that a lot of people were using and seeing results with. And a lot of people were saying that it helped control their cravings and food noise. And that was my issue. Like that was my issue. So I felt like this could be what works for me. So I contacted Shanika. And for you guys who don't know, I actually know Shanika from my previous job. I work with her. So I knew her prior to the med spa. I knew her when she created it. I, you know, I have known her. So I definitely trusted Go into her. I started semaglutide at the end of May, I believe. It was like the last week of May when I started. Literally a week after I had my appointment, I started, okay? Everything happened in May, y'all. First visit, second visits, med spa, all started in May. Like I, I, I wasted no time, okay? I did the med spa for about three months. I stayed from May till August and I saw a lot of results. I think I lost about close to 30 pounds, I wanna say from the meds from going to the med spa and at the time it was early on in my journey um as i mentioned earlier i have lost 20 to 30 pounds on my own in the past so seeing 20 to 30 pounds um being lost wasn't like a big deal to me like it was a big deal but i didn't feel like you know it was anything as significant because it was something that i have done in the past I don't know how to say that without making it seem kind of funny, but that's just how I felt. I felt like, okay, I've done this before and I've gone back to square one. So let's just pray and hope that this keeps going in the right direction. So in August, my appointment finally came with my doctor, my endocrine doctor. And he, you know, I told him what I was doing because they can see in my history that I clearly lost 20, 30 pounds, I think it was at the time. So they were like, oh, what, what did you do? Like, how did you lose the, these 30 pounds? So I told them what I was doing. And um, basically they said like, you know, we would like to continue with you on the same medication, but obviously like Wegovy, which is from the manufacturer um, of Wegovy and Ozempic. In case you guys don't know, cause there's a lot of misinformation about this online. Wegovy is approved for weight loss. 
W, weight. Okay, Wegovy is approved for weight loss. Ozempic is approved for diabetes. They're the same medication made from the same company, but one of them is approved for weight loss. One is for diabetes. So if you have diabetes, you wouldn't be taking Wegovy. If you have uh, obesity, you shouldn't be taking Ozempic. I know some people do take it for that, but ideally you would be taking Wegovy, right? That's what you know, each one is for. Semaglutide, the ones that the Mezpa use are semaglutide compounds. So basically there's a big shortage as we know with Wegovy. I think Ozempic is back in stock and has been for a while, but Wegovy is definitely still back ordered for the lower doses. So anyone starting Wegovy is having a really hard time starting because they're not making the lower doses up until I think next year. So because I was at the Mezpa and I'd been there for a few months, I was actually up to one of the higher doses of Wegovy and that's how I was able to get on it in August. If I hadn't gone to the med spa, I wouldn't have been able to start because I wouldn't be able to get the lower doses basically. And so I'm very grateful that I decided to jump the gun and start with the med spa because otherwise I wouldn't have any, I wouldn't have been able to start and my insurance actually covers it so I don't have to pay out of pocket. Well, I have a copay of like $20 or something like that. So. I was very fortunate with that because I know a lot of insurances don't cover it and very grateful that I started with the med spa because I was able to just glide into the 1.7 dosage when I started with um, Wigovi. Back to the compound for a little bit. Because of the shortage of those medications, there's kind of like some type of law with pharmacy that um, other pharmacies can make like generic versions of the medications because they're because there's a shortage. So that's how other pharmacies are able to make semaglutide. So typically, so usually they'll make semaglutide and they'll use it with like um, a vitamin or something like that. That's what the med spas and some doctor's offices as well. I've heard that some doctor's offices do offer the compound. So mine doesn't, they only prescribe medication. So they only offer um, Wegovy or Ozempic if you are diabetic. That being said, I started Wegovy in August. It's now November 1st and I'm down 56 pounds. So I'm very happy. I am a long way into my journey. I'm at the point where I feel like, oh girl, you doing it. You know, like I said, when I lost 30, I was kind of like, mm, let's see where this goes. But now that I'm 55 pounds down, I'm like, oh girl. You know, like I'm definitely building my confidence back. I'm feeling more like myself. I'm seeing my face that I have known myself as, you know, for most of my life. Simply having my confidence back is such a big deal to me. I'm just, you know, so grateful that I'm able to get so far into my journey. I do have some ways to go because I want to get down to like my goal weight, which is in the 120s, 130s. So I have about 30, 25 to 30 pounds more to lose, but I feel confident that I'm gonna get there. I know this is gonna be the hardest part of the journey. The closer you get to your normal BMI, the harder it is to lose weight because your calories really are gonna matter at this point. So in terms of calories and diet, I did wanna touch on that a little bit. Before I get there, I'm gonna talk about symptoms. So symptoms. For me, the biggest symptoms that I have with these medications, when I first started with the med spa with um, the compound, I used to get headaches, but I no longer get them. I actually stopped getting them back in August. I want to say when I switched to Wegovy, I no longer had headaches. Um, with the Wegovy though, I did feel like it was stronger. I'm not gonna lie, I felt like it was like, whoop, I felt a little like it was a little stronger, you know, like a, <laughs> it was hitting a little harder. So. I did start getting more constipation than I used to have. For constipation, I kind of figured out how to troubleshoot, if you will. So I know what to do to prevent it from happening. And I have like a list of things that I do. And the first thing is drinking a lot of water. I try to drink two Stanley cups, so like 80 ounces at least of water for the day. My goal is to drink more, but I try to make that my minimum. I do use liquid IV to make it a little easier. Right now I'm like having a hard time drinking water so I add liquid IV to make it a little easier. Second thing that I do is I take magnesium citrate if I feel like I really need to like give myself a little extra assistance. I also increase fiber to help with that and I do prebiotics to also help with that situation. So those are the things that I do. I got a squat -a potty the other day to help and I found that they definitely do work. Early on, I used to also do warm lemon water in the morning and I do that off and on like when I do remember. Honestly, with the water alone, I tend not to be constipated anymore, but if I don't drink enough water and I feel like I'm about to be, then I do all the other steps. The other thing that happens sometimes is I'll get fatigue and that's usually associated with water as well. Like if I don't drink enough water, I'll feel fatigue. So those are like my main symptoms that I have. 
everything else is basically what the medication is supposed to do for me. So that would be helping with my food noise and my cravings. So as I mentioned earlier with the cake situation, like I, if I go out for somebody's birthday and I have a piece of cake, I can have my piece of cake and I'll be good. Like I'm not thinking about cake 24 seven for the next three days, y'all. Like I, the only birthday we had so far was Johnny's. I had a little piece of cake. I was content. I didn't feel like I needed cake for the rest of the night. I didn't feel like I needed all the sugar in the world. Like that's how I would feel previously. I would feel like I needed something sweet after and it would just spiral into like days and weeks and then a month of me doing that. And then at the end of the month, I gained like five, 10 pounds and back to square one. And it, this would happen so many times. It was definitely very frustrating to go through that over and over again, but that was my reality. So I did also wanna to touch on my diet as well, cause I feel like that is kind of important. A lot of people think that taking this medication just is a miracle and it's gonna work on its own. That is not the case y'all. Like you actually have to change your diet. You have to change your diet and work out for you to see results. It's not something you take and it's gonna melt your fat away. It's not lipo. For me personally, it controls my food noise and my cravings. So I no longer feel like I need to keep eating even when I'm full. Uh, if I feel full, I'm not eating. Like I don't feel like I need to keep eating. That's what it does for me. And that was my issues. I've always known what to eat. I've always known the right things to eat. My issue was overeating and having just that weakness for simple carbs, basically. I do count calories. I don't necessarily write it down, but in my mind, I keep track of what I'm eating throughout the day. And I kind of eat the same things every day. So I, I do know like how many calories each thing is. So that's kind of how I do it. I try to stay between 1,200 to 1,500 calories. And you can kind of make your calorie go based on your BMR. Knowing your BMR will help you figure out what your calorie intake should be. Working out can give you a little bit more room when it comes to your diet. That number is kind of like your guide to where you wanna be at. Sometimes like when you're eating a lower calorie diet, like 1,200, your body kind of gets used to it and your body doesn't like lose weight. So if I notice like a couple weeks go by and I haven't really lost weight, I'll go up to 1,500 calories. I may even go up to 1,600 calories and then I'll do that for one day and then I'll go back to 1,002 and I notice that that does help reset and like start things up again and I will start losing. That's what I do for a diet. I eat mostly a Mediterranean diet. That's what my doctor wanted me to eat. So that's basically what I try to base my diet around. I try to focus on protein and fiber for my diet. And then for working out, I do go to the gym. I do a lot of cardio. I spend like an hour doing cardio. Typically I keep it really light and chill to be honest with you. Like I'm not about to stress myself out. Usually I'm tired in the morning. So I'm not really doing like crazy sprints or anything like that. I do an hour of walking on the treadmill. I try to do a little incline. I usually get to the 2.5 to three mile mark at around an hour, depending on how fast I'm going. So once I get there, I feel like I'm done with that. I do some strength training and I spend about 30 minutes doing that. So I do spend quite a bit of time in the gym, usually like an hour and a half. If you don't have enough time, I would say do 40 minutes of cardio and then 20 minutes of weight training or even 45 minutes of cardio and 15 minutes of weight training because weight training you don't need to do as much of so when you're first starting eventually you can slowly decrease cardio and increase the weight training to just help maintain your muscle mass so that's the gist of my workout routine i would say try to create a routine that works for you whatever your schedule will allow try to create something that works for that so as I mentioned, I did lose 55 pounds and I had my follow up with my primary care doctor last week. We did blood work and you guys, every single lab is now normal. Like all the labs I mentioned earlier that I had an issue with are now normal. And she was so happy, I was so happy because that was basically her hypothesis, her theory, and she was right. It literally was my weight was causing everything to go crazy. My blood pressure is completely normal like on the lower end of normal to be exact. I was in disbelief, okay? My A1C is normal, shocked, very much shocked because what? My B12 is normal, which definitely proves her theory that it was my weight causing my B12 to be abnormal, which I'd never even heard of. So my liver enzymes are normal, like everything you guys, and my cholesterol, like everything, literally everything is back to where it should be. And that made, that brought me so much joy. I felt 
like a new person completely. Like I mentioned in my vlog, I felt like a new person on the inside and on the outside, okay? So that being said, that is pretty much my journey so far. If you guys have any questions specifically that you want me to answer, leave them in the comments. If it's like something you don't wanna put in the comments and you wanna be anonymous, if you want to be anonymous, definitely DM me on Instagram if you have any questions and I will do another video where I answer questions that you may have. I did also see some comments for a what I ate in a day video, so I will work on that as well. I feel like there's so much secrecy about this stuff and you try to find information but people are lying. There's a lot of people right now and I don't, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person, y'all. But there's a lot of people right now. There's a lot of people right now that I know, I know that they're getting help, but they're they're not being honest about it. And I can get where they're coming from because like I said, even when you take those medi even when you take the medication, you do have to put in the work. So technically they're doing the work and that's why they're seeing results, but it's gonna help you be able to do the work a lot easier if you're dealing with food noise and if you're dealing with cravings. So once you take away food noise and cravings, you're definitely gonna be able to do the work that you could have done, but it was a lot harder to do it, if that makes sense. I do feel like some people probably feel like they don't need to say anything because technically they are putting in the work. Like you're putting in just as much work you just don't have the cravings. You don't have to think about it, you know? Like, it's just, it's a lot easier to say no. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this video. If you have any questions, again, please comment down below or DM me on Instagram, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.